one interesting of the Ricoh GR3 that is uh, pretty in common in recent digital cameras is the fact that it has an internal memory. Very small, yes, but you can still take about 40 raw pictures before it fills up. I don't know if it was done on purpose, but 40 is actually really close to 36, which is the amount of frames you can take on a 35mm uh, roll of film. This led me to this idea, maybe stupid, I admit, of going out to shoot and restricting myself to use only the internal memory no SD card allowed. I wanted to replicate the feeling of having no safety net. If the shot is missed, it's missed. And having no burst to compensate for the lack of timing. All these kind of feelings that are characteristic to film photography. I know it's not completely comparable to uh, shooting on film because of uh, various things. First, I still have an LCD screen that gives me an instant feedback of my framing and exposure, things that are obviously not available on film cameras and therefore requires more knowledge to expose the shots correctly and also how you deal with a viewfinder to compose your frames is very different. There is also a pretty decent autofocus on the Ricoh. It's not lightning fast, but it does the job. With film, another challenge is to get your focus right with manual focusing lenses. Now that the differences are exposed, let's see what I could uh, still learn from this experiment of uh, shooting with limited amount of storage. First thing I realized after uploading the files to my computer is how much variety I had in my pictures. Sure, I brought back only 36 frames, but almost all of them were very different. I allowed myself to take two iterations of a similar composition if I really thought that I missed the first one, but it only happened like two or three times. When coming back from a regular photo session with unlimited amount of storage, I have hundreds of pictures to sort and edit, but the variety is not that wider than the 36 frames I took this time. That makes the editing process more enjoyable and more interesting. Every single frame is different and even the less good ones I was still very positive in trying to make the best out of them with the editing. Today that with my GoPro, but I spotted this uh, funny looking uh, little car and tried to play it uh, quite minimal in terms of composition. And the next one is both positive and negative at the same time. I was way more intentional in my way of shooting and that's a good thing. Always actively looking for compositions around me, trying different things before shooting and made much more effort to get my composition right from the first click. But at the same time I found myself very selective and not taking shots that I know I would have tried with more storage. Being selective is good I think, but being picky 
can make you miss shots and put you in a negative mindset, thinking that everything around you is not worth to be photographed. One of the major benefits of digital photography is that once you have your camera, it is virtually free to practice and take thousands and thousands of photos. This way you can really fast forward your progression and get in the reps way faster than if you would do it on film. With digital, even the things that do not really stand out can still be photographed and sometimes you can even be surprised after uploading them to your computer and seeing them on a bigger screen. Best case they can turn out great or sometimes just good enough to pair with other photos to make a set. Recently I've been working on my timing, trying to take pictures of people walking at the right time when their walking motion looks the best without relying too much on the high burst mode of my cameras. I feel like I made progress but shooting with my GR in this film photography mindset was kind of a wake up call. It told me that I still have a lot of work to do. I found very difficult to time my shots because I knew that I only had one chance and sometimes I waited too long to take the shot thinking that if I waited a split second more, it could look better, but in the end it turned out that I just took the shot too late when the subject was not really in the intended portion of the frame anymore. So to all film photographers taking pictures with motion, hats off, I found it really hard and we'll go back to practicing that. Something very special, but I like the shapes it creates with the light and these uh, little triangles and the light is also hitting this uh, fence which brings up a little bit of uh, interest in the foreground. This experiment also highlighted something that I don't really like about the GR3. Having no EVF and no tilt screen was a bit challenging in this bright day to frame my shots properly. I don't consider that it's a flaw for the GR cameras because if it had an EVF or a tilt screen, it couldn't be that small and that lightweight. But once again, the film photographers have no EVF and no screen, so it really made me realize how difficult it must be to nail your photos when shooting on film. Last but not least, I think this experiment taught me a lot of interesting things that I should keep in mind for my future photography sessions. Being grateful to digital photography and the possibility to shoot almost without limit, but at the same time trying to be more intentional with my shots and be more careful about things like uh, composition, exposure and timing. The reality is that approaching the end of my digital role of GR3, I was feeling a rush to get this done and took the last few frames without too much concentration and focus. Deep down I knew that taking these, even if not that good, would not cost me any money so I still took them. With film I think you are more likely to be more patient and wait for a better occasion to finish a row. Every click is almost like the sound of a few dollars going away so I guess you are more likely to bear with the weight and make good use of these precious last frames. And 
here comes the plot twist. I just uh, took a few pictures to fill up the internal memory and it turns out that it can fit almost 67 frames so it's way more than 36. So I think it's really awesome to have this kind of feature on the Ricoh GR3. You don't need an SD card and still you can take about 60 frames so kudos to Ricoh for that. Thanks for watching as always we catch up in the next one. Bye!